Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm going to talk about the two, one was a dream, I'm sure that the other one was, but they were both from Dimitri Dudeman. So the future of Israel, this one is, it's a, a dream received by Brother Dimitri Dudeman June 17th and 18th of 1996 in Tiberias, Israel. And if you go to the website of Hand of Help, if you go to, um, I think it's Dreams and Visions link, you'll find all of these and you can just print them out to, for your own study and stuff like that. The dream was first received on the 17th and then the 18th. For two days afterwards, Dimitri was physically sick every time he tried to recount this dream so it could be recorded. That made me think of Daniel, you know, when Daniel met with God, how he got sick. After eight days of travel through Israel, I asked myself, why did I come here? All I see is a land and people are wicked. That is exactly how I felt when I was in Israel. Everybody was so wicked. The people that were in the military didn't want to be in the military. The people were miserable. They didn't want to serve in the military. They didn't like their country. They trashed every inch of the land. I mean, literally, every inch of it. They would take dirty diapers and poke them into the, the concrete block walls. And even in the dumpsters would just be overflowing and... The, the whole country had an air of misery and suffering over it. It just, it was, it was absolutely sad in a stench. I don't know, even the, the marketplaces the, that I would go, the streets would just be sticky. And it was just not a happy place, not a place that was like, you could just feel like the blessings. You know how you walk down streets here and you got trees and birds and all that? It just, it's like every single creeping thing was suffering. It was awful. Um, I'm sure maybe other parts of the country wasn't as bad. Uh, I heard that going north around Haifa was a little bit nicer because you had nicer homes and stuff. I was around the Ashdod area, which is more of a commercial area. And I went to uh, Jerusalem and Jericho and some of those places. But anyways, um... So in this dream, which a lot of times he gets angelic visitations in his dreams. It's not like my dreams where <laughs> they don't make any sense. It's like they're just a reflection of my emotional state. Like I've only had maybe a handful of dreams I knew was directly and absolutely from God. That I had evidence of it even after waking up that it was from God. Um, maybe I'll share those at some point here. But um so I know, you know, I know this is, of, if you read Dimitri's um, history with angels and God, you, you'll know this is of God. But he goes, in the stream, five of us, myself and two grandsons and the couple we were staying with in Israel were on the Sea of Galilee in Israel. And we were looking around. We noticed how nice and warm it was, a good place for vacation. At once I heard a voice from my left side. It said, you didn't come just for this. Look at me. I looked and saw a man in white shining clothing. He was crying with tears running down his cheeks. Okay. Who are you and why do you cry? I asked. He says, I am Jesus Christ and I am looking over my blood relatives and my people for whom I gave my life. Remember, they hate him. They absolutely hate him. Their sins have put a wall between God and themselves. God has decided to bring back all the scattered people from the nations. Instead of thanking God for watching over them, giving them safe passage, they had become even more wicked than they were in the nations they left. So God decided to open that door and let them come back. This is not the gathering of his people. That that gathering we will see you see in Revelations 12. And there are more scriptures on the gathering, and I can prove that, but... They say they get, they keep the Sabbath, but they don't. They say they keep my laws, but they don't. All the nations of the world have their eyes on this place, and they do. They're like, oh, that's the holy place Jesus walked. That's what I thought. I'm going to go. I'm going to feel so spiritual. I'm going to feel so close to Jesus. And you get there, and they hate him. They, they absolutely hate him. Um, we had to leave our first apartment uh, because they found out we were Christians, and the people leasing it said they afraid they would throw a bomb through the window. Um, it, it's awful. They come to seek holiness and see an example in this place. This place is not holy, but has become defiled. I always wondered, God, why did you open the door for me to go there? And I think the reason why is because he wanted me to have a before and after picture. You know how I like to upcycle? <laughs> He's going to upcycle it <laughs> big time. Because of this, God has decided to take peace from this country. And that's what I was telling you. There, There's no peace. Like, you can just literally feel even the birds are suffering. <laughs> it's just like... There's probably not a peaceful rat in that entire area. 
They do not trust in the peace God provides, but seek to make their own peace. And that's what they do. They think they're crafty and smart. I mean, you can watch Benjamin Netanyahu, and he thinks he's so smart and crafty, and they got their Zionist thing going on, and they're going to make their own peace. They're going to get all these weapons. They have nukes. We got this. We got that. It says, God can no longer stand their sins because of their wickedness. Look and see how punishment will come upon Israel. And this is what we're going to see. This is about to take place. Which doesn't make me happy. I wish everybody would be sorry and we could all just, you know... It's kind of like as a parent you tell your child, we can do this the easy way or the hard way. <laughs> you know, you can be cooperative or if you're non-cooperative, you know, you're like in your mind, you got the timeouts, I got the chair, I got the... Well, that's what happens here. God has to do this the hard way. I then saw a cloud of airplanes in formation from the left of the Golan Heights and a large army coming from a corner of the, I don't know if I pronounce this right, the Yarmouk River Valley with every kind of weapon. So this is how it will actually begin and you can watch. I'm sure we will see it because Israel's attacked before we're attacked. I think they're attacked before we're attacked. I wonder if we get taken out first. They had horses, carriages, cars, by we, I'm, I'm in Australia, um, although Demetri Dudeman said the wealthy nations, Australia may be in the, the bombing as well of the, the Red Dragon of Revelation 12. They had horses, carriages, cars, tanks, soldiers on foot. Basically, they're coming with everything. I began to hear screaming from my right and asked, can you stop this? And Jesus says, until they pass through hard times, they will not recognize me as God and will not call upon me for help. And I was thinking about how God um, in Egypt, how he put the pressure on them through Pharaoh to get them to cry out. So we also may be under a lot of pressure in the other countries as well. Um, my heater kicked on. I hope it's not too noisy in there. You will be sad and sorrowful when you leave this place, Jesus said, but after a time your heart will be full of joy. Tell those who love me that I love them first. They will be saved. I am the eternal one. See, they will be saved. Okay, I am the eternal one. I do not change. Everything that I have told you will come to pass. And that's the thing. We don't need to be afraid, but what I want this channel to be is that to really watch for Jesus and to prepare our hearts to join him. Anything in it that might be in the way, because... I, where safety is, safety isn't like in numbers, it's not a, a, a dollar amount. Safety is being right with God. If you're right with God, you'll get rescued. If you're not right with God, you get left behind. So your safety doesn't depend on an external factor. It depends on an internal factor where you stand with God. And that's the point I want, want to get across to people, not to be afraid of what's exterior to us to be more aware that it's what inside of us that could make uh, what we go through coming up in these times, that's what will make be making the difference. It's not something exterior to us, but what is interior. Because just as the kingdom of heaven is inside of us, the kingdom of hell is too. The demons are there all the time trying to pump fear, trying to pump anger and frustration and don't forgive so-and-so they deserve it don't you know they're constantly working for satan to keep pull down pull down pull down you know uh, paul said i die daily every day paul fought the good fight of faith and that's what we have to do but the exciting thing is the the really exciting thing is is that what is coming if you're right with god if you're right with jesus and you've done your homework <laughs> you get a passing grade the other uh, churches of revelations they didn't he he names and that's a good place to go read the seven churches and and make sure you're not one of the ones that where god says be faithful unto death be faithful unto death because the thing is, is that um, if you see that you have those flaws and start working on repenting and turn your heart around. And so I encourage everybody to, to uh, really get into their Bibles and really into the Word. And if you are, I'm so excited. I can't wait to see everybody. And uh, it, it's not going to be long, guys. It's not going to be long. This stuff that in these prophecies is in progress ukraine world war three is already in progress and even the nations know it is even they say world war three is in progress so 
I'm excited. I am so excited. It is in progress. I've been studying this for years and it's actually, actually really literally coming to pass. So in the next video, I will cover another major exciting um, prophetic event. I'm just going to go ahead and make these and have them ready to go. I'm going to talk about Henry Groover and show you how that ties in. And then after that, I'm going to do the 1968 vision by the Norwegian woman, which is really exciting too. So I'm going to put those on each uh, day and I'll link the articles down below so you can go download them and look at them for yourself in case you haven't seen them. And so uh, until next time, bye for now.